Finally, we RTS PC gamers get a complete game day one, with a full narrative, single player campaign, skirmish and ranked multiplayer. But what do we do? We window shop, because of the price tag. And I say we because I am personally guilty of doing this myself and almost missing out on all the fun the Valiant offers. You can see the official info and price tag using the link below and if it wasn't for THQ Nordic sponsoring this video, I would have made a mistake and skipped on this medieval squad RTS which is just as good and even better in some elements than Company of Heroes or Dawn of War. We're eager to ride. Come brothers! Let us go. An enemy squad is about to retreat. I am having a great time playing the Valiant and if you give me a few minutes, I will show you why you would have fun playing it too. I will even remove the entrance fee for some of you by giving away not one but two copies of the game if you answer a few questions about the game correctly and have enough luck to win the random draw. All giveaway rules are explained in the description below. Looks like the Saracens are about to meet a major. The developers at Kite Games, who released this game on October 19, 2022, are no strangers to RTS gameplay, as they have worked on Sudden Strike 4 and Swine HD Remaster. So, making a highly tactical squad combat game with minimal base building from scratch wasn't a new challenge for them. While you and I could find a lot of stuff to point the finger at and say this could have been done better, I want you to stop for a moment and try to remember what all those old RTS games you're comparing it to were really like. And I mean really like, not the rosy pink glasses view of nostalgia, but the objective reality. Now that you have that picture in your mind, let me explain why the Valiant is similar if not better. The single player campaign is ultimately only a very cinematic and highly narrative filled tutorial for the real challenge which lies in the multiplayer modes. And hasn't this always been the case with these games? The multiplayer is what keeps them fun for years and decades, long after you have played through the campaign, enjoyed the storyline and most importantly learned the basics of gameplay and capabilities as well as abilities of all the units and heroes. And there is quite a bit of that to learn in the Valiant as you play through more than a dozen missions of its handcrafted campaign which even has a narrator who gives it their own special outlook in journals between missions. Perhaps the strangest legends are attributed to the king of the mountain, who they call Rubetzal. Some claim he is a giant who commands the wind and snow, waylaying anyone who dares enter his dreadful domain. These increase in difficulty just as they give you new hero squads to level up and upgrade their skills through the three different skill trees. You also quickly unlock all the types of regular auxiliary squads which benefit from those new hero skills. With new gear you find on battlefields, you can upgrade your hero squads and their stats, but there are also some single use weapons which have short time effects on enemy units, like throwable axes or Greek fire. Some weapons will even change the use of that hero squad, so make sure to read the fine print on those weapon tooltips. Very reminiscent of the system in Dawn of War 2 if I may say so. Your first hero and main protagonist is Theodoric and he has a long history with the main antagonist of the story, both of which used to be Crusader Knights. You brought us here, then abandoned the fight, abandoned your men, and even abandoned your vows! For what? Careful, Theodoric. We may be friends, brothers even, but never forget who is in command here! During the campaign, Theodoric is joined by a colorful array of other characters like Conrad, Grimhild and others, which all bring their own specialized squads, skill trees and ultimate abilities. There are several types of infantry, each with a special role of being a counter to two other types of units. A shielded swordsman will shrug off arrows or bolts and rout both archers and crossbowmen, but it won't fare well against heavy maces or axemen. Those same axemen, but also spearmen, won't have anything to protect them against arrows or crossbow bolts, but if you make the mistake of charging cavalry into spearmen, they won't last long. On the other hand, if you hit the mark and trample archers with horses, 
they will be cut down in moments. Besides this regular system of unit counters, the abilities they have add another layer of tactics to battles and complicate your strategy pre-battle when you actually choose which squads to bring in and how to equip them. You can lose your auxiliary units during missions and recruit or reinforce them again at war camps, but fallen heroes have to be revived by fellow heroes on the spot. Besides the regular health pool of each unit, represented by the blue lines, they also have two additional important stats. Fortitude, the top white bar, and Vigor, the bottom purple one. Fortitude is a bit mystical as it regenerates out of combat and serves to shield your unit from initial damage in a fight, almost like fate in one's own invincibility but stay in combat too long and your units will start to feel those sword cuts and axe chops for real. Vigor on the other hand is spent when using squad special abilities I will talk about a bit later. Leading a whole host of specialized squads might seem difficult, but the incredibly handy system of formations makes it easy as one click. Because when you right click, hold on the ground and pull the mouse, Different formations are shown as outlines depending on how far you move the mouse before releasing the right click. This is especially useful when you want to hide your units in tall grass and crops to ambush unsuspecting enemies, as springing ambushes will disorient enemy units for a short time and let you get a jump on them to deal lots of damage before they can fight back and it is here and in a myriad of other ways that the real fun of the Valiant shows itself. It might sound easy on paper to hit horsemen with spearmen, spearmen with archers, archers with swordsmen, but when you are getting attacked from three different directions, have objectives to protect and half a dozen abilities to use at the right time, it proves almost too much. Of additional notes are all the effects that different terrain has on your units. Forests, roads, bogs and swamps all have huge lists in their tooltips explaining the various buffs and debuffs to units and their abilities. The interplay of unit abilities is just as important as their specialties. A volley of arrows from an archer can both slow down enemy units and prevent them from charging your own, which is great for crowd control especially since you are almost always outnumbered. Mace units knocking down the X-Men give them a chance to move away before getting cut down, while those same X-Men can taunt a squad of horsemen just as they are gathering speed to trample a squad of crossbowmen. When all of these elements start to pile up, you will be happy unit abilities have cooldowns, just as ultimate abilities of heroes, so you can have a moment to wipe the sweat off your head and hands. The lack of a manual save during the campaign only makes combining all these combat elements that much harder and more stressful, as you know failing the objective means also replaying part of the mission. But on the other hand, and this is something I have noticed most of the reviewers missed, you won't be able to get yourself stuck in an unwinnable scenario after overwriting your latest save file. And this is a game where you could easily do that if you saved after a major tactical error, the consequences of which were yet to be revealed. Replaying campaign missions is totally possible and encouraged by the game with the extra challenges and higher difficulty levels. Some of these missions include defense of objectives where you get to use the minimal base building options like constructing watchtowers for your range units or setting up sharpened sticks to slow down enemy advances. In others, you will be building and defending huge siege engines, all part of the main story. But it is only after you get good practice during that story that you move on to the most fun part of the Valiant, its multiplayer modes. To get a good sense of how the quick and ranked battles work, I suggest practicing a bit against the AI in 1 vs 1 or 2 vs 2 matches where you can choose the beginners and advanced difficulty with another level planned by the developers in a future update. Inviting another player right off Steam or from the game's Discord, link to which is in the description by the way, for a custom battle is also a good idea and it is what I did. Of course I got trashed like a total newbie, but it was only to be expected because in multiplayer, which looks and plays similar to Company of Heroes multiplayer matches, 
there are all sorts of units and building upgrades which you pay for with gold and wood accumulated by the buildings you take over on the map. Capturing these is only a part of the overall gameplay as you also have to take over victory points to actually win the game by reducing the enemy's influence. We have captured a new victory point. Until you start playing against a competent opponent, you might be still thinking you are prepared for what is going to happen, but you are not. With several squads spread out on the map, mismatches will happen all the time and your units will prove paper thin if they run into their counters while you are busy with something else. Since there are more squad types than you have the ability to recruit at the same time, making choices to fit the current tactical situation and your enemy's army composition becomes key. Ambushing enemies from tall grass and crop fields is doubly exciting and devastating here as battles happen everywhere and enemies can come at you from multiple sides at once. Not having different factions in the game might seem a big deviation from the RTS norm, but on the other hand, you could say it prevents needless overcomplications and balancing issues which usually come from that. Learning the correct upgrade chain for your base and your units is very important in multiplayer matches, but it's also a double-edged sword. If you upgrade only a few types of units, they become strong, but then your enemy is also free to focus on their counters for his own army and can more easily defeat you. Spreading out upgrades across all the units lets you keep army composition flexible but prevents you from spending wood and gold on other types of upgrades you might have wanted to buy. In essence, the more elements you learn, the more complex the gameplay becomes, as you combine all of them in your match. I have a lot more to learn myself, but I don't mind as I'm having fun while doing it. As for the last man standing multiplayer mode, it requires you to have two more players with you as it is designed for three players to protect three objectives from waves of attackers. These objectives are also actively helping you survive these waves and losing them reduces your chances to survive more waves. But it is very hard to be everywhere at once as you are in the middle of a fort and can be attacked from all four sides. To some extent, this mode reminds me of some of the StarCraft 2 modes where you could practice learning effective unit counters as hordes of unending enemies keep attacking you. Do note, this game mode offers experience points for your hero squads, so the more you play, the stronger they get and you can survive more waves next time. And you can also upgrade their weapons and armors as well with the coin you earn. It's good fun with friends against the AI with far less to manage than in the regular multiplayer matches which are, for me at least, the best experience in this whole game. In that mode you don't get experience to level up heroes or units but to customize them, keeping the gameplay fair while also letting it get colorful. Don't act surprised. We haven't had this much fun in what feels like ages. I would love to see more players join me in the multiplayer and give this game the chance it deserves. Thank you for watching and happy gaming.